Okay, so I've got my, uh, my floor plan here, and I want to do some details now of the stair. And I've got a floor plan here, which has a similar setup to, to what I want. So actually, I want to use this one here, the, uh, the ground floor plan. And then I'll start by duplicating that view, also that layout. So it's the easiest way. Right click on the, the tab and then go to Move or Copy. And then you can choose where you want it to go in the list here. So I'll go to the, uh, I'll go to the end. So I'm just going to choose Move to End down the bottom and then tick Create a Copy. <coughs> and so now. It's copied my layout, but I can't see it. And that's because I've got a lot of layouts. Mm -hmm. So I'll delete some of these. I've got some extra layouts there that I probably don't need anymore. So I'm going to right click and delete those. Again, these that have names that aren't clear, I'll just delete. And so now uh, I've got <coughs> less and I can see more down the bottom. Um, and, uh, well, just keep an eye out for the arrows. So I might just undo a couple of steps back. So, even if you delete layouts, you may still have some that are hidden. And so when you have hidden layouts, uh, they'll show up when you click on those double arrows there, and then you can see uh, all the other layouts. Right, again, I'm going to just go forward, so I'm redoing, so that it goes forward to the point where I've deleted those layouts. And now I'm going to just rename that layout and uh, give it a more sensible name. So details, you can have with, uh, I think five, I always have to look these up, but I think five is the, uh, the number. So here I'll make it 50. Oh, that face is freezing on me. I'll start typing 502, oh maybe. And uh, it's called Proposed Stair. And I'm going to change my uh, drawing number straight away. So I've got a viewport there, which I'll select, and then uh, I can see the scale down there is already set to 1 to 50. Uh, there's a chair in the way of my stair that I've just got to move, so I'll just put that to the one side. Uh, that again later. But then back into paper space, and I'm going to crop that view just by selecting the viewport border, and then using the, uh, the corner there and drag that across just to show the part we want. So that's going to give me a good view of the stair and you can actually rotate viewports. So with that viewport selected, I'll use the rotate tool and then you can see with auto turned on, I can easily rotate that 90 degrees. And, uh, and that's a pretty good option if you want uh, things, uh, diff different orientations. Uh, you can also rotate inside the view, but, uh, but again, rotating the whole viewport works pretty well. So again, just using the regular rotate tool. Okay, so then I'll bring that out slightly. Uh, and so now, I'm going to show you that I can dimension in paper space. So up until now, I think I've been showing you that you can dimension in model space. And you can see back here, I've got dimensions that have been drawn in this plan. And so maybe I'll just do one more here so that you can see how that comes up. I'll change to my uh, annotation layer. And I'm going to use linear. And then I'll put in a dimension for maybe for the length of that whole stair. So just from the end of each of those treads. 
place it over to one side. So then if I go back to my proposed stair sheet, you can see the dimensions showing, but it's been cut off because of the viewport. And so I can leave that actually as it is, but I want to put some other dimensions in here and I don't want to have to have those all within the viewport. So that's why I want to show you how to do dimensions on the page. So you can see here the viewport is on layer called viewport. So I feel that's something you've been uh, looking at already. And that viewport layer, you can see in the layer properties is set to be non-printing. So if I was to look at a print preview, you can see the viewport uh, border doesn't print. Um, there's a good chance to look at the viewport, uh, sorry, the print preview as well to see the line weight. So you can see there's a line weight that's coming up fairly well as well. Uh, so now I can go and uh, do some dimensions on the page. I might just go and uh, yeah, use uh, linear again. And so then I can dimension maybe just one of the steps. Place that down below and it can go outside the viewport. But notice how it's giving me the right measurement. Um, so it's pretty clever in that way. So if I use linear again, I'll just show you, if I was to dimension on the page, I'll just do that again. So if I don't snap to uh, things inside the viewport, if I just snap down here, right, so that's the dimension on the page, mm -hmm. but this is then applied with a scale, that's right. And uh, if you want to be why it's five, it's actually being rounded off. So that's in the dimension settings. Uh, but if we were to check that distance, it would be correct. So, so whatever 280 divided by 50 would be is 5.6. So that's what the measurement would really be. But again, in our dimension settings, that's rounded off just show as five. So it's really important if you're going to dimension in that way, on, in the words dimensioning on the page in paper space, just make sure you snap to things inside the viewport. So again here, if I snap to these corner points inside the viewport, I can then still place it to one side. Uh, so I've got an extra line in there. That's why it's coming up to the 10 mil, but that's okay. Okay, so that's an important thing though with, um, with views like this. And then you could also put a reference. So going back to the uh, the floor plan. Oh, sorry, it's this one. Okay, so now we should have a reference to show uh, where the drawing uh, that has the, the stair uh, detail and uh, or where it is. Uh, so for that, I might make a new layer. I've got an anno layer for annotation. So I'll make another one. So I'll just call it a anno uh, either lines or ref, so ref means reference, um, or you could just call it lines. Uh, and so I'm going to set the line type of this to hidden. And yeah, just leave it 0.25, that's fine. Uh, so I'll make it current layer. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Uh, over the stair, so I'll just try and get that dimension. Oh no, so I'll just do it to one side of the dimension. Just like that. And then I suppose we can use one of the uh, blocks from the library for the reference. So I'm just going to go to uh, insert and then more options. So I can choose browse. And then if you go to the, so this is again on the P drive, here design, and then you go to the AutoCAD library folder, and then blocks 2D. There should be a reference symbol folder, there we are, and then ref50. And, sorry, get the right one, this one here. 
So it's ref DWG50, the one I'm using, which has ref number and drawing number you can see there. Let me choose open. And then we need to see if this one's been scaled. I'm pretty sure this one has been scaled, which means we need to basically reverse scale it. And I'll show you how to do that. So, uh, so I'm just going to test it to make sure that it is scaled. So I'm going to click OK without changing any settings here, except maybe I'll, so I'll turn the option off. I don't need to rotate it, so I'll turn that off. And I'm just going to make sure I've got the insertion point option turned on. Everything else turned off. Click OK. And yet we can see it's really big. So that tells me that it's been scaled. Right, so it's set up for 1 to 50. So I'll press Escape. And uh, so I'll go back to insert that again. So same file. So that one. Okay, so I know it's 50 times bigger. If you know it's been set up for a particular scale, you can usually assume that it's been scaled by that amount. So it's 50 times bigger than it should be. So if anyone want to be brave and guess what 1 50th is as a decimal? No? Okay, so what's, what's a hundredth <laughs> as a decimal? Okay, what's a tenth as a decimal? Yep, point 0.1. So a tenth is point 0.1. <laughs> yep, so a hundredth is point 0.01. Right? So a 50th is double that. So it's 0.02. Okay, so converting between fractions and decimals is something that you do need to do a lot in, in construction. So, uh, so it's something that you probably need to spend a bit of time with. And you're working with scale all the time. And again, that's, it's the same idea with, with that. So when you're working with scale and construction, giving accurate measurements, um, doing those little sums in your head is something that you need to practice. And uh, particularly, you know, converting to those standard scales, that's something you need to do all the time. Uh, so again, that's the scale factor for 1 to 50, 0 0.02. And uh, so I'll turn rotation off again. Click OK. And it's asking me to redefine, if I want to redefine, yes, I do. So there we are. So now it's the right size. Okay, so I'm just going to place that... Uh, somewhere that's not going to be too messy, so maybe this will do. And then I can put in my references. So it's going to be uh, number one on A502. Okay, now it's picked up the line weight, oh sorry, the line type for my layer, so I'll just change this back to the regular annotation layer. And then I'll change back to that layer and draw some lines just to connect that. There we are. So that's a standard way of referencing to the sheet that I've just made, which means it's Drawing number one on sheet A502. So this is sheet A502. So now I need to put in a title uh, to have the reference for this uh, drawing. So again, back to insert, more options, browse, and then in this folder we've got a drawing label. Uh, this one here. Okay, so the second one there, ref DT50. Okay, so again, we're pretty sure this one has been scaled. So because it's 1 to 50, the scale factor is, again, 0 0.02. I'll just click OK, and then you can see it's coming straight away the right size. There we are. So the drawing title is uh, stair, stair Plan. Uh, the subtitle uh, could have the scale, so 1 to 50. Uh, the detail number, this is the most important thing, so that's where we put the number 1 in. And then the drawing reference can actually reference back to the drawing that it's come from. So 
my ground floor plan is A103. So I can put that in and do some reverse referencing. Um, reverse reference is always optional. So you don't always have to put in the sheet number here. So this A103, that's optional. So that's that reverse referencing back from this drawing to the one that it's come from. Uh, but for a small project like this, it's, it's not a bad idea. It's only with really big projects where that becomes too confusing. Okay, so that's how you should have all of the, the drawings referenced. And then the section can be done the same way. So, so I'll project that off now and I'm going to go back to the model tab and just start projecting uh, the first section. And so I've actually done the existing stair here, but this is actually this is a new stair, uh, even though it's in the same place and it's a similar size, but it is actually a new one. Uh, so I'm going to do a new section. And I'll rotate the view around, so actually I'll rotate it the other way. So just using the arrows there to rotate. And then, so we need to know the forward floor height and let's measure that. Oh, that's right, it's easy, 3,000. Okay, so... my floor layer. Uh, so I'll just draw a line across for the floor. Oh, yep, that's right. And then offset that 3,000. Okay, so then do you remember how to set out the heights for the rises? Um, yeah, you can you can do that. So yeah, extracts and, and copying and pasting, that's good if you need to get other views there. But in this case, uh, I've got everything I need. So probably the most important thing to think about there is how you're going to divide to get the equal measurements that you need for the stairs. So, so I'll, well, I'll show you how to work it out from first principles. So if we go back, I'll just change to my um, stairs layer. <coughs> So here, uh, I'll just use the existing one for now, and uh, I'll, I'll use my new one. Make sure my line weight's okay. So I've got this as structural, but you you could have yours as um, architectural. I'm just going to make the line weight there heavier. Yep, make that current layer. So I'm going to draw a line now between these two lines. So these two lines represent my two floors. So they're three metres apart. So this line, we know, is, is three metres long. So that's like a measuring rod that measures the distance between the two floors. And so then on the draw panel, I'm going to go down to divide. So you've got the two buttons there at the end. The one with the N on it is divide. The other one's measure, which is a very similar tool, but does something slightly different. So make sure it's uh, divide. Okay, but before I use that, <coughs> how do we know how many steps? That's right, you can count what you've drawn. So here, so if I count, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 rises. <coughs> that would work. But if you want to check uh, to see that you've got the right number. To work it out uh, even before that, if you know the requirements, so we know that the maximum height of the riser is 190. So uh, there's a, well, I was going to say there's an AutoCAD calculator. If you want to try that, it's just CAL on the command line, and then you can type, uh, in this case, 3000, divided by, which is the slash, forward slash, and then 190. And that gives me a number there, so you can see it's telling you 15.7. Needs to be modified. So yeah, so you can see from that that what I've drawn in the plan isn't going to work, and I will need to add more, uh, and I'm going to do that in a moment. So, so coming back to, I'll just do the calculation again, just using the calculator, so we can see the figures. So again, 3,000 divided by 
190. So that's 15.7. We always have to round up. So that means we need at least 16 rises. So coming back to again 3,000, and this time divided by 16, gives us 187.5 rises, uh, which is actually pretty good. That's, a, that's a about as close to an even number as you'll get with stairs usually. So don't be one of those people who think that you start with the riser height. So I've seen a lot of people say, I want a 175 riser, and then they multiply it to get their, their floor heights. Um, when, of course, you should go the other way. Start with your floor heights, and then divide the floor to floor height to get your riser height. And don't worry if it's an irrational number. So if it was 3,000 divided by 17, we'd get an unusual number, but that's okay. So that's perfectly acceptable. The builders can still set that out. They wouldn't sit down and measure 0.47 of a millimetre, but they can divide evenly. So that's how you do it when you're making a stair. So, so we know we need 16 rises. So again, 3,000 divided by 16, again gives us 187.5. So to help with that, it's not a bad idea to number the stairs uh, in plan as well and in section. And, uh, and I'll do that right away. So, so here we know that I've got 15 rises. And I'll just maybe quickly look at the counting. So when you're counting rises, you count each step and the floor that it's going to. So here you can see I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So going to past here. And so, of course, that tells me I need one more if I want 16. And uh, so I'll uh, select... Well, sorry, no, I'm going to maybe just redo most of this and show you some good ways you can, um, you can modify things quickly. So, so here I want... Uh, more risers and I want it to fit into a smaller space. I know that I've got 280 treads at the moment, so I can reduce them down to 250. So using offset and then making it 250, can offset this first line, delete some of these. Uh, yeah, I'll just delete that. And then again, just use offset 250. a few more in. And so at this point, I might just pause and uh, maybe clean this up a little bit, but I don't want to get rid of all of these lines because I want to just keep some for... Oh yeah, so I'll actually skip that. So I'll keep this part so I can reuse it. And again, using offset. There we are. So now I can trim at that point. and then move the brake line down. Ah, so just make sure I did the right one. So I'm just going to get a measurement. Yeah, that's right. OK, so again, just move that brake line down. And then just tidy that line up. Just save me doing all those lines again. And then I'll clear all of these. And then again, offset 250. So I've got that in brackets. I can just press enter to keep that. And then uh, offset a few of these lines. Uh, maybe use extend this time. Just bring them up. And then just continue offsetting. Once you've done a couple, you might find it's quicker to copy a group of lines since they're all the same distance. Okay, so then I can obviously count them, but I might just uh, start numbering them, uh, which is also, uh, of course, going to give me the count. So I might just, just tidy these up a bit as well while I'm at it. So I'm not being too fussy here, it's only a brake line, but it sort of looks neat. I missed it. Okay, 
So again, I can just put some numbers on there. And unfortunately, with Revit, they don't have an automatic numbering tool, uh, like you do in, uh, sorry, did I say Revit, in AutoCAD. So in Revit, there is an automatic numbering tool for stairs, which is a great thing. But uh, with AutoCAD, you basically need to number manually. So oh, firstly, I'll just check which textile I've got active. So I've got notes there. That's good. And it is 2.5, so that's pretty good. So going back to text, I'm going to use single line text. And I'll put a number uh, starting over here. And it'll ask me for a rotation angle, so I'm going to keep that at zero. One. And, oh yeah, now watch out for that. It's rotated. I didn't even want to think about that with the, um, the views that I've done. And uh, so if we look at that in properties, so I've just selected the text and then I've right-clicked, so I can go to properties. Uh, you'll see that in here, it's got the rotation angle on zero. And so I'm going to change that to 90, which should bring it around. And, uh, and that's fine. So then rather than repeating that many times to do some new text, I'm simply going to select that one and, uh, and copy it. Now, it's up to you if it goes on the top or the bottom. I think in this case, maybe it will be neater on the bottom. Just check on the drawing. Yeah, I think on the bottom. Uh, so, again, there's no right or wrong there, just whatever you think is clearer. Yeah. So, I'll uh, again use copy. And now I can use the base point of one of the steps. And then just go along snapping and uh, place those on the same place on each step. Tidy this up as I go as well. And uh, now I can use trim, of course. Bring that line back. Just keep tidying up these other lines, but I won't go too far with that. Make sure we can do these. Mm, make that a bit neater. Yeah, that'll do. So, uh, anyway, I'll tidy that up a bit more. But, uh, but for now, that'll do. So, again, now I can just double-click on these numbers to change them. So it's really important that you number them in the direction that you walk up the stairs, not uh, not left to right or anything like that. It's just, of course, starting from the lower stair. And uh, again, I can adjust the text as I go. Uh, so here I can change the rotation angle uh, in properties. And there you can see it's a bit confusing because it's, again, coming from the... Uh, the world coordinate system. So there it's 270. We want it to be uh, the opposite to that, so it'd be 90, which actually is just like the other one. Uh, but again, this uh, is multi line text, so it's rotated a bit differently, and we can move that afterwards. Uh, so then I can again just continue copying the text using the copy tool. Uh, just like that line. And so it's really important that you number each step. Got one extra there, well that's fine. So now I can just go along and continue adjusting these. Don't take that long. Yeah, and the justification always uh, goes off when you get to the ones that have two numbers, but it's easy just to move that. Uh, so 15, and then we need one more. move all of these over slightly. There we go. Uh, so that should all come up on the, uh, the detail plan as well. Okay, so, and then we can transfer those to the section. So going back to my stair layer, and then I'll set out my first step. So. So again, remember we've got 16 rises, so now I can use that, finally use that divide command. Select this line that I drew as a measuring rod, and then type in 16 for the number of segments. If you don't see the points, remember you've got the get point style. So under utilities, or you can type DDP type, or go to the menus. 
SDBA and oh, tengo miedo. Oh, I've set them to absolute units. Sorry, so they're there. If you zoom in, you can see there are the points. Uh, sorry, I forgot. I'm again back in point styles. I've set this to absolute units, which means that they're very small. They're five units. If it's relative to screen, then 5% is okay. And you can see those pretty clearly now. But again, going back to point style, I actually like working with units, with absolute units, but it needs to be a bit bigger than that. So five units is fairly small, but if I make it 50, then uh, it should be fairly clear enough. Again, we generally like working with, with absolute units because the size of the points stays the same, no matter how you zoom. Whereas if you set it to relative to screen, they'll change size depending on, on how you zoom. Okay, so now I can draw a line coming across from that first point. Just make sure it's a straight line. And then I'll draw another line coming from the plan up to here. I'm going to make my steps, uh, let's say, 40 mil. So I'm just using offset now. I'm going to make that 40. And then offset this line down 40. Uh, I'm not going to have toe space, so I'm going to project another line from the next step. Again, up to my section. And then I can use fillet. Make sure the radius is zero. And then just join these together. Just using fillet each time, pressing space in between. Okay, so now I'll draw another line coming from the second point, going straight across. And then get another line coming from the, well, I don't really need to do this, but I'll just do it so it's clear, coming from the second step again up to, the, up to that same line. But I could have just come from here. Okay, so now I can copy that, um, that step. So I've selected the line. Uh, and uh, now I click copy and then pick it up on the corner on the top right and then snap to the um, snap to the intersection of those two lines and then I can delete the two lines and then select the second step and use copy and this time again use the nosing or the corner of the first step and then with auto turned off you can just snap to the same point on the step that I've selected and that will set out the new step by the same distance, the same riser and the same going. Did you make a 40 step? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Okay, so before long I'd have all the steps but of course I can do them as a group. Once I've copied a few I can select maybe three or four and then click copy and then again the trick is to snap to the step below the one you've selected and then go to the same point on your last step. And there we are. So you can see now that this last step lines up exactly with the floor above that it's going to. Of course, we don't need a step there. That will be the floor. So I'll delete those other steps. OK, so I've got there um, enough, really, for uh, cantilevered stair. But then remember that you need to have uh, a maximum of uh, 135 between those. So if we measure that distance, you'll see it's slightly more than that. So you would need to put in some sort of uh, framing piece there and uh, or some uh, trim or, again, uh, an extra blocking piece. So I can put in just a rectangle. So going from that corner point there. And then I'll make it, uh, well, I'm just going to guess the size and say 50 by 50. So I'll make it minus 50, comma, minus 50. So it goes down to the left. So it didn't go down, that's odd. Oh, because of the, again, the x, y. And I don't want to have to think about that, so that's the right size. Uh, so I'm just going to use move and bring that down to the corner. I'm going to move it back as well. Uh, so I'm going to draw a circle from this corner 
and make that 135. Okay, and that's just again so that I can check that I've got the clearance that I need. So you know what I'm looking at, the 135 gap. Um, so again, think of a baby's head, that's what it was based on. Uh, so they shouldn't be able to squeeze through that gap. And so now I can move this piece back, just using the move tool. So I can go to the left with auto turned on. And well, I can actually go back what I wanted to, which was 50 mil. So that's perfect. Yep, so that works. Uh, so I'll delete the, uh, the circle now. That was just to help me set it out. And so again, that piece can be copied uh, to all the steps. So this time, I might use the front of the step as my base point, and then I can easily just snap that onto each step. And again, you can get groups of them. Okay, so again, when you have nice even things like steps, it is easier just to repeat those. Okay, so um, the most important thing that I want to show you here, though, is the, the stringer. But you need to... Uh, what about the, the very last one, when you sort of Yeah. Do we need this anywhere? No, no, because you'll have the... So the edge of the floor will be here. So I'll just draw that in. So the floor is going to be like that. Oh, yeah, right. And so then we'll say that the floor structure will be at least 200. So I can offset down... That's right, that's right. So I can offset down at least 200. It'll probably be more than that, but at least that much. And uh, so again, we can just join these together now. So that's basically what the floor would look like. And uh, so then, so now I can start to work out my stringer. And again, that's probably the most important thing because with a, uh, with a stair like this, if you want to do one like I'm doing, which is basically to have open risers and then have it supported either side, the stringer on, on this side can be concealed in the wall. But the stringer on the side where you have the sandstone wall can't be. So that would have to be exposed. Right, so that's, that's what I'm going to draw. And so the stringer there is going to start, firstly actually I'll get the um, new layer. So again uh, with a line I'm going to draw from the corner of my first step and then take it up to the corner of the last step. And this is not the right layer, so I'm going to... Ah, I'll just use this one. Okay, so... Uh, I'll draw another one from the bottom of the first step to the bottom of the last step as well. Okay, now... To know the, the next distances, you really need to do structural calculations, and you're not engineers, so you wouldn't be expected to, to know how to do that. And, uh, and so all you can do here is really guess the size of the stringer. So this is the, this is the absolute minimum to have it at least uh, so that it fits the steps in. But, but we know from uh, seeing other stairs maybe that it would have to be bigger than that in uh, almost every case. So it's good to just to check the measurements. So here from that corner, perpendicular to the other line is 182. And so if you look at some, some uh, stringers, then you'll find that uh, they'll be at least 250 in most cases. Uh, so if you've got some timber stairs in your house or uh, if you've seen them, then uh, try and uh, take a measurement or at least uh, have a look and see what you think the size is. And so then you'll see also that it needs to come up above these stairs. So again, all we can do is guess, and I'm going to say 50 mil is an offset. 50, so from there, come forward. So again, like I was saying, they often are about 250 deep. So again, we'll use offset, this time 250. From there, going the other way. And then I can delete these extra lines. Now, actually, sorry, that's probably not the best. So maybe I want to bring it back down a little bit because that distance there looks a bit too much. 
So I'll use offset and then make it uh, 30. And then bring both of those lines down and get rid of the others. So that looks about right. Uh, but again, to get that correct, you would need to do some calculations and also maybe talk to the stand manufacturers. Uh, but again, as long as it looks basically right, that's all you need for this project. And uh, so again, some sort of stringer. If you don't have a stringer on the sides, then you'll need a stringer underneath. Or um, work out how uh, or what the requirements would be if it's going to be cantilevered. Is anyone doing cantilevered stairs? Oh yeah, glass. So that's yeah. So that's different again. So yeah. So we just need to try and get some um, construction information on on those. But uh, well, the the basic principles are the same though. Regardless, you'd either have a stringer, um, unless again it's cantilevered, in which case uh, essentially it does have the same structure, but it's concealed in the wall. So you would still have a stringer. Not without some sort of extra support. Yeah. Because it's only wood, so it's not. But that drawing, that drawing, and that string is on the on the front of the wall. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can. That's right. So that, that that's the other way of doing it. So you can frame it up off. If it's got something underneath, you can frame it up. Uh, so, yeah, so that's always an option as well. If you've got lots of walls that go around your stairs, uh, they can, uh, the carpenters on site can build your stairs and they still need to make something that's similar to a stringer, but they essentially build it into the wall frame. And, uh, if you've got that kind of stair, how do you show it on the So, well, you can just show it going up to the wall framing, okay. as long as you, you know that the... No, not always, no. So if you, as long as you've got, yeah, if you've got walls all around your stair, yeah. then you just need to make sure that you've allowed room for the structure in that wall. Yeah. Uh, so, but then, yeah, to finish this one off, I'm just going to come forward from there, uh, again, 50. Make exactly the same layer as the other things. And fill it both together. So that's a typical stringer. And... Uh, and then at the top, it would join to the floor above, so it would generally come a little bit above, maybe just 30 above this floor. And then again, I'll put that onto my stair layer. And I'll just extend this line up. Uh, this one can just come down as well, so it's a bit clearer. And actually, well, in this detail, or in this drawing, we don't need to see the line of the floor continuing across, so I can even use bring that line back with fillet, uh, so it's clearer still. And that line there should have the light line weight. There we are. So, looking at those numbers, so now they can be all copied up. It's going to be really important that you have the numbers on your section as well. So, they can all just be moved individually. I know it takes a bit of time, but uh, that's, that's what you have to do. And there are some good tricks there as well. Uh, so using move, I can snap to one step and then snap to the next step and that will bring it up exactly one riser. And then I can go and use move again, type P for previous, and that will select all of those objects again. And then I'll just hold down shift and click on the one that I want to stay. Okay, so then again, you can use the steps to move them up and just keep repeating that process and you get pretty quick at it. So again, P for previous, shift to deselect the last one.
Okay, so it doesn't take that long to uh, move them all up. And I've done 10 story buildings like this, where you have a lot more stairs than this. And uh, usually several staircases as well, full of them. And it is the sort of thing that, that people check because the, uh, the certifiers have to go through and uh, stairs are one of the most important things that they need to check thoroughly. So, uh, so again, really important that they're numbered and uh, set out properly. Okay, so you can just continue on like that, numbering them all. And then uh, this measuring rod uh, can actually be a useful thing, so I might just move that over to the side in case I need it again later. So now then going back to my sheet and I'll just move all of these things up a little bit. And then which would be is to copy that viewport down with the, um, at least with the, the label. Let's say me doing all of that again. And I can bring this up, go into the viewport. And if you remember that little trick or that special pan command, dash pan. And then I can click a point, and if all those on, I can pan easily in a straight line. Okay, so this pans uh, and keeps the drawings lined up nicely. Let's bring this down a bit more. And then maybe move the whole thing up. That'll be number two. Okay, so then the um, the handrail needs to be shown as well. So I'll just bring that up a bit more to get more room for that. Yeah, sure. What do you mean? Uh, I just haven't finished doing it, just so you don't have to watch me repeating that. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we just repeat all of that. Yeah, but it will be good to actually just to see the last one because uh, then you can see that the, the last number of course goes on to the next uh, floor. So again, that last step is, is really the, the floor to the next level. Um, so then the handrail, um, the reason I've been sort of debating this one on my mind a little bit is because it's not that clear, but uh, you're not actually required to have a handrail. So have you had a look at, at that? That's something you should have been looking for in the uh, in the BCA, what the requirements are for handrails, and then hopefully you would have realised that you don't need them. They're not required for a non-required stair. And and it's it's common sense, you'll see. If you have a look in many houses, uh, in other words, other class one buildings, I'm sure you would have seen that many handrail many stairs don't have handrails. Uh, so it's not a requirement. People assume it is because they think, well, I've seen stairs with handrails, it must be required. But in fact, they're not. Uh, only in required stairs. So if you don't have a handrail, technically you don't need to put in uh, your handrail uh, in, the, in the drawing. But, uh, but again, it's something that you, you probably should have. It's definitely a nice thing to have for most people. And um, so here I might have it mounted to the, again, to this sandstone wall just so that it's visible in this view. And uh, uh, yeah, if it's open, yeah, of course, yeah, that's right. That's the requirement. So you do need to have at least one metre high um, in most cases, but on stairs you can actually go down to 865 from the, from the sheet, even though you should keep it at a metre if you can. Uh, and I'll show you how you can set that out. But here, because I've got a wall next to my stair, I don't need to have um, a handrail. Uh, but again, I'm gonna, I'm, so I'm going to keep the wall there that encloses that side, but I will put a handrail on this side. 
even though it's not required. Sorry? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure that, yeah. So, um, okay, so I'll just do it on this, this layer here, even though it's got a bad name. Maybe I'll just fix that. So this should really be a projection. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so drawing a line from the nosing here up to the, the floor. So that's, of course, following the same angle as the stringer. Now I'm just going to use the move tool. So I'm going to select that line and then click move. Click a base point and then take it up vertically. Uh, and I'll do it a thousand. The 865 is really uh, necessary only when you join into uh, to other handrails that, that require it. And, uh, and that'll be clearer when you do U-shaped stairs or particularly for stairs in um, fire escapes, things like that. But here I can easily do the thousand. So, uh, so that's always good. And then I'm going to offset uh, just 50 mil. So it's a fairly thick handrail, but that's that's okay. That's what I want. And then just keep it fairly simple here. Do a line vertically, and uh, same at the top. So not vertically, perpendicular to the previous lines. And then you want to try to show the mounted. So to work that out, we really need to draw in a section uh, going the other way. And I did have no. I'll get a. Uh, I'll do a new one. So, okay. So now I want to project the other direction. I don't want to go too far into this because we'll run out of time. But using the um, the drawing that I've got, we can rotate the view. And oh no, so I want to go the other way. So let's just back to front. So now I want to project so that I can see from uh, this direction looking upwards. And so I'm going to select the uh, what I've done already. So I'll move that measuring line actually down a little bit so it's out of the way. And so I'm going to select the section I've done already and then use copy and bring that up. And then I'll rotate that. Uh, no, no, because I've copied it. So if I go back to here, you can see it's all as it was. Okay, so now I can project the other way. And that's really the main thing I wanted you to, uh, wanted you to see. So I know we've been doing this already, but just want to make it really clear. Uh, so with the, um, the wall layer, I'll just draw a line now projecting up off the floor plan. Do another one. Um, this one I might even just extend across rather than drawing a new one. I'll do some more lines from the sandstone wall. Okay, so then I'll go back to the stair projection layer that I've been using and project across now from this section. Right, so then I can copy that line. And here, I could use the steps, but it's probably better to use that measuring rod. So I can just snap to one of those points and then just keep snapping to those. Again, we can copy as a group. We'll copy a group of them, just to save some time. Right, and then again use trim. So that's my wall edge, so I'll use that as my uh, edge to trim. And then trim all those lines back. Okay, so I've got an elevation now of that staircase. And again, we can copy the numbers. Um, show you a good trick there. I can copy all of these. Exactly. Yep. Okay. 
Okay, so I've just selected those those numbers. So with copy, now I'll bring it up to my new drawing. Ah, they don't line up, unfortunately. Okay, so this click one. Well, they still will work. Okay, so I'll just have to move them. So here now, if I go into properties with those numbers selected, I can change the rotation to 180. Yeah, and oops, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So, uh, and that way I could then just move them down and uh, I'd have to maybe just do that in uh, stages, but uh, again, that can be done. Uh, yeah, it probably should come down slightly. So this is 2.5. Uh, on a 1 to 50, uh, that's, that's actually a pretty good size, but yeah, just because of the size of these steps, then maybe you could take it down to 2 mil. So the great thing about uh, annotating is that you can just change it after you've made them in properties there. So I can just change it to two. Yeah, that's, that'd be a good idea. So going over to here, I want to change these as well maybe. And so a good trick there in properties, you can always filter up the top. So I just change it to text. Even though I've selected all these other things, uh, I can just get the text properties and again change those to two. That's slightly better. So, um, so again, we'd have to move all of the text down. I won't do all of that now, but uh, again, hope there's something you can. Oops, I'll again come back and do that later. Uh, so then the handrail. So okay. So then in this view, I'll project across. So again, I'll stick it on the same layer. So coming from here, this is the uh, bottom of the handrail that we'd see. So there'd be some sort of uh, bracket and mounting. Uh, and uh, so again, it's going to depend on your design, but just to do a very simple one, I'll draw a rectangle. And I'll type in NEA, which is a shortcut for nearest, and that way I can just choose a point by eye on this wall here, and uh, and it'll snap to it. So I'm going to come up and to the left, and we'll say it's uh, seventy, yeah, seventy mil high by uh, twenty mil wide. So now I've got to think in terms of X and Y upside down. So it's going to be, yeah, minus, I oh, see, so yeah, it will be 20, 20, comma, minus 70. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, yeah, that'll do. So then I'll do a, um, <coughs> good thing it comes up from underneath, I think. So again, with the line tool, coming across, and then, oh in fact, sorry, I'll use polyline this time. I don't show you that very often. So with polyline, I'll go from the midpoint there and across, uh, let's say 40, and then up uh, 60. I know I'm just guessing these, these measurements, something like that. And then I'll use fillet, radius, uh, set to 20 and just choose those lines and then if I offset just 5 mil either side of that to get the piece finished so something like that maybe ok so I've got to think about the hand railing plan now and uh, so again I'm going to offset uh, 50 And uh, actually, sorry, let's make it a bit less. So maybe you can even have 30 for your finger space, basically. So between the wall and the and the circular handrail. Uh, yep, so that'll do. And then again, we've got the 50 mil for the handrail itself. Just change these lines to my new layer. And I'll copy those lines up. In fact, sorry, I'll just uh, trim. Yeah, that'll do. 
So with the uh, skim tool, actually it goes from the uh, from this step uh, up to here. Yeah. Okay, so that way I can keep these lines for the plan, and then I've got the um, the lines here showing on the elevation. And you can see then, this rectangle that's left is actually going to show me what the um, bottom of that handrail looks like in elevation. So that would be an ellipse, and I'll um, just draw a rectangle over that, just to give me something to snap to. So now if I use the ellipse tool, uh, so I can get the centre using the um, tracking like that, and then come across, and then up, and that's what the handrail would look like. Uh, even though it's circular, in elevation, that's how it would look. So I'll delete that rectangle now, and I can use trim, and use the ellipse as my cutting edge, and trim these two lines back. Okay, so even though this uh, is going to be largely hidden in this view, I'm going to keep it there for the time being, because I can use that now in, if I project back, the other elevation to work out how that would look in this section. Okay, so, and this is how you design. You often work these details out as you draw them. So here, again, I'll get this, uh, this piece that I've drawn from my bracket and then copy that now using the bottom of the stair as my base point. And then come across and, uh, well actually, so it'll be, yeah, about there. So you can work it out by eye, you can see the point where that needs to touch the handrail. And then just think about how that would look from this uh, orientation. Okay, so it's uh, a rectangle from this side, but it would probably be a circle, a circular piece that's attached to the wall. So by projecting across, uh, or sorry, just drawing a circle, and also I'll just do one extra line to make it a bit easier. I'll draw a line across here. And you'll see why in a moment. So now if I go to draw a circle, I can use the midpoint uh, of this, and then the midpoint of that new line I've just drawn, and the intersection of those two is the centre of my circle. And then the radius, is of course going to line up with the uh, top or the bottom of that rectangle. So that can go. And then the circle, or this, this piece here, will actually, it'll be circular as well, but it will look like a rectangle in this view. Uh, that's actually fairly easy, so I can explode these. Look at our polyline, so I've exploded them, so now I can just delete these extra pieces, the arcs, and then use fillet set the radius back to zero, and then join those together. Okay, so now I can use trim, and uh, I'll just tidy that up. Oops, I've trimmed the wrong lines. So I'll use trim again, and so this should have been the edge I trimmed to, and then these two sides. There we are. So delete that. So that's one bracket and then we'd have several of those going up. And uh, well, a good option there would be to use copy with the, in fact, sorry, before I do that, that's, that's got to change. I just want to make that a bit smaller, so I'm going to just adjust that slightly. Uh, so I might begin to say 20. That's too much. Uh, so I'll bring it in 10. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'd need to go and adjust the other one uh, as well, but uh, I'll do that afterwards, so that's better. So I'll copy this again, this time using one of the steps as a base point, and then I can go up to another step, so that's up to step six, so that's four, so I can go to 10 now, and then another four, so that's 14, and then we'd have 
one more uh, just below the top. So you can divide those evenly. Uh, if I went down uh, a bit further as well, we could always use uh, use the move tool to adjust those. But anyhow, that'd be good enough even uh, like that. But again, you can fine tune the position of those brackets. Just want to make them spaced a bit more evenly. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes, you can. So you can do a 1 to 5 detail of that if you really want to. But in the brief, it just says 1 to 50. So that's all you need, yeah. So you don't need... I mean, you could put more detail in there, but that would be enough. 1 to 50, that's that's good enough. So, uh, so now, remember, it's on this drawing down here. So I'd have to copy that. So we can copy all of that now onto the the view below. Now if we just remember, there's a few steps there uh, to help you line that up. So I'll show you a couple of good tricks. Okay, so I want to um, copy and then rotate. So I'm going to show it to you without getting too complicated. So I'm going to use copy. And uh, so I've just selected all the parts that I want to copy. And so, yep, so again, I'll uh, just put the base point maybe on the corner of that step there. So remember that point. Oh, the corner of the spinner, I should say. Okay, so if I go to the corner of the spinner here, it's going to go over over these other objects. Uh, but maybe I'll do that just so that it's uh, clear. There is a another way that's maybe uh, slightly fewer steps, but it's uh, a bit more complicated um, when you're looking at all the steps that I have to show you. So, so I'll show you this way. Uh, so starting on this point, I was using that point as my second point, and now I use rotate and then just make sure that I'm careful when I'm selecting these these things to rotate. So there we are. So remember, I'm going to use the same base point there as I used with copy, and then I can just bring that around 90 degrees. And so now onto my sheet, and, uh, and those things are all done. <coughs> So that's as much detail as you need. You shouldn't need... Um, I mean, if you want to do one to fives, you can. But, uh, but again, I think that'll be enough. So the ballast pad and hand dryer construction, uh, that's the level of detail. No, no. So you need to do them for the bathrooms and the kitchen. That'll be more than enough. And I was going to say, uh, I know it says three bathroom details and three kitchen journey details. But yeah, it, two, two at most, I think, is enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, just where it connects to the ground floor. Oh, having the stringer, so the stringer touches the ground floor, so that's enough. <laughs>